Hey friends and followers, Steve here with eXp Realty. In today's informative video, I'm going to be going over easements, what they are and how they factor in when it comes to property transfer right here in the Sunshine State. So stick around for the next couple of minutes as I catch you guys up to speed on easements. As always, thanks for tuning in, checking out the videos. Steve here with eXp Realty. If you guys dig the videos, dig the content, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. So yes, as mentioned, easements. Well, what is an easement? An easement is the right to use uh, the land of another for a specific and limited purpose. Easements will not convey ownership or possession. Most commonly, an easement entails the right of an individual or to the public to use the land of another in a very specific manner, such as a utility company, railroad right-of-ways, and of course, ingress and egress easements as well. There's four different types of easements, and they are as follows. First up is the easement appurtenant. An easement appurtenant involves two or more parcels of land and continues from owner to owner. So essentially, when the uh, property is transferred to the next person, they get that easement along with the property. Next up would be the easement in gross. Now, an easement in gross does not benefit a specific parcel of land. This easement benefits the company or the individual that owns it. Third up on the list is easement by prescription. Now this is acquired when continuously using another person's real property for a statutory amount of time, when such use is adverse to the owner's interest. This easement is created after 20 years of continuous uninterrupted use. And last type of easement is the easement by necessity. If a landowner subdivises a parcel of land and therefore creates a uh, parcel to in fact be landlocked, the county court can actually authorize the creation of an easement to get in and out of that particular property. Now, because of these different types of easements that do exist, that's why it's extremely important sometimes to have a survey done at the time of obtaining a piece of land or a home with a uh, kind of a strange layout to it or whatnot. A survey, for some of you that don't know, is a drawing of a particular piece of land showing its boundary lines. The boundaries are measured by calculating the dimensions and areas to determine the exact location of a parcel of land. There's a few other advantages as well as to having a survey done on any piece of property that you get. One is to obtain current and accurate boundary information required to write a legal description for a piece of property. The next reason being is to establish the exact quantity of area that is uh, mentioned in a described tract, square mile, square foot, or acre. Another reason being is to reestablish boundary lines that may have either been lost or obliterated. Another reason being is to obtain data required to uh, divide a large plot of land into smaller units for de development and sale. And one of the last main reasons for having a survey done is to identify and describe any encroachments that may exist on a particular piece of property. Unlike an easement, an encroachment is the unauthorized use of another person's property. To give you an example, a fence or a garage that is located just beyond a legitimate property line without that owner's consent is actually an infringement or an intrusion on that person's property which makes having a survey done and knowing exactly where your boundary lines are all that more important as you don't want to run into any of these headaches. Furthermore, if an encroachment exists on a particular piece of property and is not known about at the time that a contract for sale is written up and a survey then reveals that there is one, uh, in some cases, the title may not be marketable on that piece of property. And at that point, the contract for sale becomes void. So there you go, my friends. That is a little heads up on easements and how they affect the transfer of property here in the state of Florida. As always, if you have any further questions on this or anything real estate related here in the central Florida area, drop me a message. I would love to hear from you. As always, thanks for tuning in and checking out the videos. We'll catch you guys on the next.